Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Joe and Lisa coming to you. I just want to thank everyone for watching and for subscribing. And as you know, we busted the thousand subscriber mark. So, yeah, now we've made about 75 cents. Yay! <laughs> so that was never our goal, but we're glad that we got it. And yeah, that's all wonderful. Um, hey, we wanted to thank the wonderful family from Alaska that watches our channel. And they came here uh, to Vilcabamba and they brought us these cool hats from Alaska. We love it. Thank you so much. It's hard for me to find the bigger crown hats here in Ecuador for my big head. Oh, these these were a win. We really, really yeah. enjoy them. And we've never been to Alaska. So it's kind of like uh, going around the world and never having to leave home. All right. So um, we're going to jump right into the video. And the, the title of this video, we've titled 12 Reasons Not to Move to Ecuador. So there's a reason for that. Um, we've had several comments on our channel about, hey, why don't you talk more about the cons or the negative things about Ecuador? And, and we have kind of done that offhandedly in a couple of videos. But um, so we're going to focus a little bit more. And, and we don't like to be negative, but we do like to give you the best information we can give you. We felt like this format would be the best way to help people think about these things and whether or not that they're actually a good fit for Ecuador, because you may not be. Um, as we've said before, people come here and don't make it. Well, and you, to, to leave your home country, everything you've always known all your life, and go to a foreign country that is very different from where you're leaving, um, it's, it's difficult. There are challenges, and you have to have a really adventurous spirit to overcome those challenges and make the best of your new home. Yeah, and so, you know, we're going we're gonna to kind of go down this list, and it's by no means all-inclusive. Mm -hmm. So if you already live here and there's something we've left off the list, feel free to comment and, and put it in the, in the list. I ask that you not be too critical on Ecuador. We're, you know, these wonderful people have allowed us to immigrate here, and mm -hmm. so we don't want anybody thinking we don't love this country because we do. Um, but if, you know, there's something we've left out, feel free to comment. So number one on the list is, don't move here if you think you can't live without your Dr. Pepper <laughs> or insert other product here. Yeah, you have to be willing to change your name brand. So if you're into particular name brand items, um, you may need to make some changes and be a little bit more adventurous and find out what's here that maybe you didn't have um, from where you're coming from. Dr. Pepper is here now. It didn't used to be five years ago when we came, but um, we're not big Dr. Pepper fans by any means, but it um, is now available. I think my mom has bought a can or two from like Super Maxi, and I think it's like $2 a can. I mean, it's really expensive, so you have to really want it, but uh, she had been off it for a while, so now it's not quite so uh, exciting for her, so she quit buying them. And we're just using Dr. Pepper as an example. It could be any of your favorite products. Now, again, more and more things are available here that weren't available here five yeah. years ago and 14 years ago, 15 years ago, however long you lived here. Yeah. So some things are, are now available. And for instance, we talked in a previous video about uh, smoked paprika. It's here now. It's, it's in here. Super, Super Maxi. Yeah. I guess Super Maxi must be watching our videos. Yeah. <laughs> And um, Jif peanut butter, I can remember when we first came to visit um, a guy that was helping us, he was saying, you know, if you could bring me back a really big jar of Jif crunchy peanut butter. And we're going, really? And he's, yeah, Jif crunchy peanut butter. It's like, okay. And now it's all over the shelves. So, yeah, yeah, now it, it's it here. It is available. Okay, so whatever product it is, I mean, uh, it's good likelihood you can find it here. If you can't, you could ship it in. Sure. But, you know, I, I'd like to discourage people made from shipping in too much stuff and, and start to rely on the Ecuadorian products and help the local economy more. And I, I think that's a good thing. All right, number two. What's number two? Don't move here if you can't deal with occasional power outages, water outages, or internet outages. Yeah, and you know, we've had all three when we lived in Texas a lot. <laughs> Matter yeah. of fact, we were just talking at our farm in Texas. Um, we were without powder, power all day one time, and I had to run generators to keep my aquaponics pumps running in the greenhouses. Mm -hmm. It was a real challenge. So, yeah. yeah, it happens here too. 
although I say less and less and less. Yeah, the first year we were here, we had quite a few. But we are out of the city. We're a little bit further up. But I hear in town, I mean, I think they have more issues than we do up here, um, especially with the water. But um, it's different if you're, I mean, we're from Texas. It was very flat land. And now you move to Ecuador, everything's in a mountain. Mountains move. And so everything's not as stable as maybe you would prefer it to be. But that you know, you just live, you learn, you work around it. But if you don't have patience for that kind of thing, then um, you know Ecuador may not be the place for you. Absolutely, I, and I think um, you know we've done some things to work around those issues mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah. The internet, you know, occasionally will have a, a glitch, and not too much we can do about that except you know go down and complain about it. Yeah. Um, they we just had a recent deal with the internet and. They worked with Lisa, you know, via text, and, and it took a couple of days of really working on it to get our speed back up where it should be. But they were incredible. I mean, they mm -hmm. really were. The, um, I think anytime they add, we're on a fiber optic line, anytime they add a new line, it seems like um, it changes things a little bit. And I know they had added a new line because we were out for about half a day. And then when it came back on, it just wasn't there. The, the uploads and download speeds weren't there. But the tech support was very, um, very patient with us, yeah. patient with us, very accommodating. And he just continued to work. And he, he first got the uh, uploads going really high. And I'm going, the uploads are great, but can we work on the downloads because they're like in the tank? And he did. He was wonderful. And he assessed our whole um, operation from his office so he could see anything that was plugged into it to make sure somebody wasn't um, hacking into our Wi-Fi system. I mean, he was just really, really patient and really good. Yeah, we really appreciate them. Hats off to Bill Kinnett. Yes. Thank you so much. Awesome IT team. <clears throat> All right, number three is don't move here if you demand promptness from your service personnel, from your delivery drivers, from workers, uh, anything yeah. like that, um, you got to have some patience here. And, and these guys are, are probably not going to show up on time. They do celebrate. Yay, yeah. wonderful. Um, but bring in your concept of what it was like in your country mm -hmm. and trying to apply that here is not going to work. There's I'm a, not, yeah, ahead. there's a lot of differences. The um, Coming from the U.S., there was a lot more um, technological advances where everything was connected good, bad, or otherwise, they don't always have that much here. But for me, that's okay. Yeah, and, you know, I won't say that there's not good service here. There is. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got some people who have done marvelous stuff for us that have been Johnny on the spot. Yeah. But, you know, don't always expect that and just roll with it. When you find those guys that are really good, like we had some painters on our house and far exceeded our expectations in wow. everything that they did. And Man, they did a great job. They did. So those are the guys you really keep their numbers and refer them out so they can get a lot of business. And the other guys, you just don't refer them out as much. Yeah, and, and, and I'll say our painters were, were probably the most expensive ones we looked at. But mm -hmm. absolutely worth every penny. You get what oh, you pay yeah. for. They were incredible. Yeah. All right, number four. Um, don't move here if you if you don't intend to attempt to learn the language. That's really, really important. Yeah, I think if you have no intention of trying to learn the language, then uh, yeah, you probably shouldn't come. Now, yeah. I know it's harder as you get older. It's extremely hard for me, um, but I keep attempting and I keep trying, and um, you know, I keep trying to speak Spanish with people. And, and let them correct my Spanish. That's always good. That's definitely right. And you can't in, embrace the culture. You can't be a part of the community if you don't at least try to learn the language. And it was funny, like the first year or so, Joe knew all the construction words. <laughs> all the tools. <laughs> and I could fill in other areas. So between the two of us, we could figure out what somebody was saying. Yeah, so, yeah, we, we both have our strengths still to this day, but yeah. um, we really, um, 
really can't suggest strongly enough to, that you need to get started now and yeah. be it lingo pie or um, duolingo duolingo whatever you want to work with do it just do it and a lot of stuff yeah. is free online mm -hmm. no excuse not to be able to at least try yeah and i would say consistency you need to spend 15 20 minutes minimum every day because you're immersing yourself into a language and that way you can you can learn it and pick it up a little bit faster i agree find you a spanish-speaking friend and get after it yes yes all right number five don't move here if you're not willing to embrace the culture mm. and that's part of learning the language as well yeah um so culture here is a lot different and um you know certain things are not appropriate we've mentioned this in the past you don't just sit down for a business conversation and launch right into it there are some formalities that should take place and you need to learn those things you need to learn when it's appropriate to approach someone about a product that's giving you a problem and how to approach them mm -hmm. it's very important you under, understand that money is not as meaningful to an individual here as family <laughs> and and uh, quality time with their family now, they're not all motivated by money as many in the united states would be yeah i i would say personal relationships and when we get into the medical too it's more about supporting the people around you and uh, and with security as well it's neighborly support and and really going after that type of thing and money just doesn't buy everything here in ecuador it will for a short time but uh yeah and i think you know um really a family name and reputation is extremely important yes. here so when you insult someone's reputation there are laws here to protect them against that yeah. and i wouldn't want you to find yourself in trouble on the wrong side of that true slander true. laws liable laws are very uh, uh very important here and i will say where it comes to family if you find somebody that is a, a wonderful worker which we've had several and if they're a really good worker really good character really good person that runs through their whole family line. I mean, everybody in their family is absolutely wonderful. All right, so that kind of leads us into number six. Don't move here if you expect perfect legal government system. Yeah, um, you know, no government's perfect. Matter of fact, they're all pretty bad, mm. in my opinion. But um, yeah, so the one here is, is very different. It's more of a Napoleonic law here. It's a weird mix. Don't ask me too many questions about that because I don't get into the law. Um, there are plenty of lawyers here to answer those questions. Sure. But um, anything that you do here that requires you getting involved with the government, be it the car inspection, what we call the matricula, first time you get a matricula. Um, I mean, we covered this very well, but it takes two days. And it's two days of being patient and smiling a lot sure uh, it's just the way that it is i know at our county in texas we can waltz right in with our registration and we're in and out of there in 30 minutes and it's all done not going to happen here um, just the way it is software systems are not as complex here as they are in the u.s um, just a lot of reasons for it just embrace it and roll with it yeah if you're going to get a car, then you also need to get the Ecuadorian driver's license, which is absolutely wonderful because they have a simulator online where you can practice and study for the test. So uh, go ahead and do the whole thing because it really helps you learn the culture more. You need to get used to standing in line with everyone else. That's right. And be patient. Yeah, if you're too good to stand in line, you're not going to work well here. Yeah, I mean, Joe took him multiple trips. You have to go to Loja and take, took multiple trips to get his driver's license. But it's a, yeah. it's learning patience and learning the culture. And when you walk out a winner and realize most of the people in that room did not pass their test, um, rejoice a little bit quieter. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it's it's just the way things are. You know, the mm -hmm. visa process is is can be cumbersome if you don't have the right person helping you. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be. But you just have to understand, hey, I'm going to get it, you know, and, and I just relax. Um, you know, if you're using our friend Isabel Mascara, you just relax. Isabel's going to take care of it. 
she wouldn't have taken your case on if she didn't think she could get your visa. Yeah. So um, she will get it, and you just need to relax. It's going to happen. And on that same note, if you send a note to anyone in Ecuador, including Isabel, and they don't respond, please send them another note because there are glitches with emails and, and so forth. And so just assume that if somebody doesn't respond in 24, 48 hours, maybe they didn't quite get your message. You might need to reach out again. Yeah, don't be afraid to follow up with people here and, and you know, be kind about, hey, I'm Maybe you didn't get my last phone call. Maybe you didn't yeah. get my voicemail. Maybe, you know, you didn't get whatever. But I want to make sure that, you know, you, we had the opportunity to speak. So I'm reaching out again. And yeah. they'll appreciate that. It happens to me. I'm not really good with email all the time. Sometimes I ignore it a little bit. I but can never get a hold of her. <laughs> I'm retired. Okay, number seven. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Don't move here if you've got a big fear of crime. Yeah, so crime worldwide is going up, and we fully expect it's going to get worse. I think when you've had um, something like the pandemic where a lot of people couldn't work, yeah, and so, uh, you know, they've got to make a living somehow. They can't get food for their family. They're going to do whatever they can. We have had an increase in crime here in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. I will say mostly in the big cities of Quito and Guayaquil, but we have had some here in Vilcabamba. Mm -hmm. Home invasions went up, um, and we, we've had some things happen that have helped that. And uh, we have now new, all new police officers here in Vilcabamba, and they've made some arrests. I will say they've caught some people and got some people's things back to them. It's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, they have been doing a really good job, so shout out to the local police. They're doing a great job. Yeah, yeah, it looks like they're, they're actually really trying, and we, mm -hmm. we appreciate that a lot. So there's some laws that are changing here, and one of the things that's changing is that um, we're all going to be allowed to get a gun permit and actually carry a handgun. So um, that's you know so that's some loopholes you're going to have to jump through, and you're mm -hmm. going to have to understand a little bit of Spanish. Um, yeah. Again, another reason to learn the language. Yes. But the great thing about it is, is that now um, that's always has been a deterrent to crime is when good people are armed. And you can argue with me about that all you want, but the results in countries like the U.S. show it. Every time a, a state gets concealed handgun licensing, crime rate drops like almost in half. Significant yeah. drops in crime. So uh, you can't argue with those facts. And for us to be able and allowed to take care of our own, our own home, our own family, yeah. is, is huge. So. Um, we're, we're seeing the current president is doing some moves like that. And we really like that. Um, there are some people who are with a former president. They're still in office here that are fighting him on all of this. Um, but people are getting their permits already. So we know it's happening. And he's doing it because of the spike in crime. He's trying to give people the ability to protect themselves. Um, all over the world, if you can't protect yourself, then you're at the mercy of the criminals. So he's just trying to help the people out. So he's done some things recently by, I guess you would call the executive order, um, where if you're involved with a cartel or a gang, then you're considered a terrorist. And the penalties are much stricter. And yeah. so they're actually putting together some special forces to take care of some of this kind of stuff. Um, I just read an article where in the Amazon, some people were mining gold illegally mm -hmm. and they moved in, destroyed their machinery, and they actually filed terrorist charges against them. They've made that now a terrorist offense to illegally mine, you know, gold, silver, whatever it may be here. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're making some great moves and, you know, they're trying to do some things too to protect our, our forests, our Amazon, you know, Amazonian range. Um, yeah. The Orient is such a valuable resource, it needs to be protected. So. Yeah, and the indigenous people really step up in this case, and they really um, watch out for the environment and bring it to light in, in a political way. So uh, just a short note, we have just entered the windy and dry season here, so you're going to hear a little bit of wind today. We can't help it. Yeah, and that brings us to the next point. If you don't don't move here if you like four seasons because 
we don't really have four seasons. We don't really have seasons. <laughs> it's it's kind of the same temperature year round. However, yeah. the windy season, the wind does pick up here in Vilcabamba. Yeah. Not all of Ecuador has a windy season, just this area. And so um, it gets dry, doesn't rain as much. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, we get a couple of months. It'll be this way all the way up to about September 1st. Yeah, September or October for us up here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was thinking the other day, it's like, oh, you know, big planting seasons in the September, October time frame, getting ready for things to get going. And it's like, oh, we have a long ways. We're kind of in between crops, long ways before the next planting cycle. And we do keep planting things here we year do. round, but our, our main focus, we really kick up in September. And well, there's, um, they have the, the moths. What are those? Yeah, little? the caterpillar moss, cabbage moss, yeah. we call them. So. And those are, you know, they are flying everywhere. I'm surprised there's not any around us. I guess the wind's <laughs> blowing them away. But the, we have to cover things with insect netting yeah. um, to grow any crops right near. They, they lay their eggs in there and then soon Devour you get the little caterpillars everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And you just can't, you can't win with them. They're, so if they're you don't there. like cabbage moss, don't move to Ecuador. <laughs> that, that is cabbage moss and roly polies. If we can, the roly polies little, um, what are they called? crustaceous little vim yeah they're crustaceans yeah. yeah they they uh they wipe your plants out no matter you can where see our uh, our video war on bugs yeah we don't have a war on these uh cabbage moths we so need to we need to i just haven't figured that out yet all right number nine so don't move to ecuador if you're an avid fisherman hunter golfer bowler um you know <laughs> There's just no real hunting here at all to speak of. Um, the fishing is very limited. Some tilapia ponds. Uh, the, up north, there are some lakes that you can fish for trout in, you know, with fly fishing. There's a fly fishing club up north, I think. Mm. So, um, and there's, you know, deep sea fishing out on the coast. But interior here in the mountains, there's just not any fishing at all. Yeah, if that's your retirement plan, you might need to reevaluate. You're going to have to travel to do it, that's for sure. And, you know, golfing, I think there's a whole maybe two golf courses in Ecuador. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard there's one in Quito and I think one down in Guayaquil or something like that. So uh, one public course in Quito, I think. Mm. Not mm. a lot of golfing here. Bowling, haven't seen it here at all. Um, no. So, yeah. So some of those things, you know, you're going to have to find new hobbies. That's true. That's true. Yeah, and if you just don't think you can leave your, your hunting, fishing, et cetera, for a new lifestyle, yeah, then pay, probably don't move to Ecuador. If you do, maybe live here six months and somewhere else six months. And I will say that moving to Ecuador is a different lifestyle in every way. So you really have to change a lot of things that you do or, or that you had planned all your life to do if you come to Ecuador. And there's a whole lot of people who do just that. You know, they move here for six months. Yeah. And then they live somewhere else for six months. Because you can, you can effectively do that on a tourist visa here. Mm -hmm. Is uh, come here for six months and not get a, you know, to go through the whole big visa process. Right. It costs you $120 or so for six months. It does. But the, the rule on that, I think, is use it or lose it. So if you come and you only stay a month and a half and you paid for three months... It's not like that extra month and a half is going to carry over for the next time. Um, Ask Isabel. <laughs> yeah, talk to Isabel about that and uh, make sure that you plan that properly also because I've seen people come and they get kind of in a bind with their, um, their passport regulations and when they can come and they want to keep coming back. But you, you only have 90 days in one year. So if your 90 days are up or almost up, then they may not let you in unless you can go right away and get an extension. But you have to leave enough time on your passport to be able to go get that extension. All right. Number 10, don't move to Ecuador if you don't have sufficient finances to take care of you all the way up into your old age. Right. Don't expect this country to take care of you because they're not going to do it. They really are not. Um, the Ecuadorians that um, are poorer in their old age and they need support, they rely on their family. So if your family's not going to come here and take care of you, 
somebody else's family is probably not going to step up. I will say in, in town, there are community groups that um, people gather around and you have family away from family. And that makes it really nice, but don't burden the people that you don't really know or people that you call friends because you don't want to take care of your own fin financial well-being before you get here. So I think, you know, the minimum amount of, of income for a pensioner visa here now today is $1,450 or something like that. that I think $1,350. Yeah. So if $1,350 is a month is all that you have, please don't move here because while that's plenty enough to live on here, it doesn't account for your getting sick and going in the hospital, needing right. surgery, those kind of things. You need some other resources. And so, keep in mind, if you go in the hospital and you can't pay your bill, they don't let you out. They put a guard at your door. They have a guard at your door till you make some arrangements to yeah. pay that bill. And that may mean someone from your home country has to send some money here to yep. do that. So um, keep that in mind. And, you know, I, I think the other thing, too, is that if you're going to be a homeowner here, there's always something, you know, a driveway gets washed out by the rain, um, you know, there's repair to the new roof. You have to be able to pay for these things. You're not going to get a loan from the banker as a foreigner. No. Uh, it's going to be very hard to do. No, and, you know, it, I can't tell you how much we've put into this piece of property since we've bought it just to accommodate changes in the weather, the landslides, the lack of water, the um, electrical outlets. Those are all things that you have to deal with. And if you don't have any extra cash, then everything is just going to fall apart around you. Yeah, it's very frustrating for me to see young people from the U.S. come here without sufficient resources and come here basically illegally, overstay their visa and mm -hmm. try to live here on no money. And they're begging people for money or yeah. begging them to stay somewhere. Keep in mind, everybody here probably is on a retirement income, the, the older people. So to bring your burden and think that everybody's going to pay your way may not no. work out well for you. Stay where you're at. Don't come here if that's your case. Um, yeah. We, we'll appreciate it. And, uh, you know, again, it's not for everyone. All right, number 11. Don't move here if you can't be, a, be away from your family and friends. Well, that's a tough one, you know. Um, it really is. We miss our family in Texas, and uh, we so bad want to see them. And, and, you know, the truth is, is that most people aren't going to travel here to see you. Yep. Uh, they think this is a horrible third world country. <laughs> and, and really, they're living in one where they're at. Um, mm. But, you know, it, it's just not going to happen a lot. So it's, it's going to be up to you to keep those uh, friendships and relationships alive. And, um, you know, there's so many ways to do that. I mean, we have Zoom and WhatsApp, video calling that's free, all this free stuff yeah. to keep in contact with people. So that's really, really lots of electronic measures to do that, videos. And so, um, you know, just understand it's going to be hard being without that family and friends. In the very beginning, it was, it was really tough on me to be away from my friends. Yeah, yeah. But, you know... You make new friends, and you do what you can with family to to keep in touch. And we have had a couple of friends come to visit here, and we, uh, we really appreciated that. And we always try to give them a place to stay, you know, to encourage that. Uh, sometimes our casita is rented, and we can't do that. But if you reach out to us, we'll make sure we save some space for your friends and family. Yeah, for family, for sure. Friends, if we can't find space, we'll we'll look around and. Find you we'll another find space that you can you. can yeah. stay at a reasonable price. So just be aware it's going to be a lot of people come here and leave uh, because it can't stand to be away from the grandchildren. Uh, it's tough on us. We love our grandson, Ethan. How are you, buddy? Yeah. But we love him and, and we want to see him grow up and we just, unfortunately, that's not in the plan. Yeah. All right, number 12. So then we're going to go back to medical a little bit, but don't move here if you need handicap access. It's really, for the most part, not here. This is not a handicap friendly country. Now, mm -hmm. that's not to say there aren't some places with ramps and a few things. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of a 
somewhat a new thing here. Well, even um, there's not always sidewalks. If there are sidewalks, they're not smooth. Uh, we live in a mountainous region, so everything has an elevation change. Um, some, sometimes it's a smooth elevation change, sometimes it's not. The roads are usually easier to walk on than, the, side than the sidewalks because there are always steps. And I have to say, we have a friend that does some work for us, and he, uh, he made a comment to my mom one time about um, the steps being too big because Ecuadorians in general are pretty much shorter people. And so the, you would think all the steps would be, you know, a reasonable size. No, they're, they're huge <laughs> steps. They're not, yeah. not reasonable steps at all. They're, they're pretty big steps. And so a lot of times a sidewalk may have, you know, a, a step that's maybe over a foot tall. And then you have a little step after that. So that they're not consistent. It's not um, easy to walk on. Yeah, I will say that, you know, like in downtown Loja, there's some great sidewalks everywhere. They've done a nice job at redoing Loja in the last five years. And when we first came here, it wasn't that way, but it is now. And uh, sometimes the sidewalks are only this wide. But, True. Uh, and expect that a lot in Cuenca and El Centro, some very narrow sidewalks in places. Um, and some places are going to have pretty good access. But, yeah, you get much outside the city and access just goes away completely. When I say when we moved here, the, the sidewalks in the city weren't great, but they did come in after that fact, and they've gone in in, in a lot of areas and really made some really nice wide sidewalks because everybody walks more than drives. But uh, I have yeah. a friend here in Vilcabamba um, who's elderly in the late 80s, I'd say, and he has a walker with the four wheels on it that you push and hold on to. And you see him pushing that all over town. He does really well. And, you know, sometimes he has somebody walking with him. Sometimes he's all by himself. Yep. Um, but he manages fairly well, lives in a first floor apartment and uh, does good. I see a lot of uh, little ladies with canes, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and I say gringa ladies, you know, mm -hmm. walking with the cane up, up <laughs> the steep uh, streets here, you know. Yep. And so even though they're, you know, somewhat handicapped, they get by. Um, but that's the point, too, is they're living in town. And so in town, if you're um, in poor health, you can get around and, and access things and keep stay mobile. Because um, what was it? Uh, OJ's doctor told him if you stop moving, you die. My old deacon, yeah. So uh, keep moving for sure. But you can do that in the in the inner cities um, if you have health problems please don't move rurally because if something happens to you there may not be anybody around to help you for quite a while yeah it um, living rurally if you got health issues is is a problem i say live where the the good doctors are and where the hospitals are is yeah. where you need to live close to that and um, I think pretty much everybody agrees the best doctors in Ecuador are going to be in the Cuenca area. Mm -hmm. And so we found some real good doctors there. I have good doctors in Loja, but there are some specialties that aren't covered in Loja that you'll need to go to Cuenca for. True. So, True. you know, there's a reason to live in Cuenca. It's a huge city. We're not big city people. But um, if you're thinking about moving here and you're going to need that kind of help, move where the help is. Yeah, and you went and visited Zumba, which was absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous place, yeah. And, you know, we looked at 250 hectares up there for $250,000. Um, screaming deal, beautiful land, everything you can imagine. Forests full of trees. It had uh, waterfalls and lakes and it had pasture land. And, uh, but you need a helicopter to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're... The, the local basic hospital is an hour and a half, two hours away. Mm. Um, Loja would be four hours probably to Loja. So, yeah, there's no way. If you've got a, a heart condition like mine, you, yeah. you need to be within that golden hour or so. So, um, you know, we're 40 minutes to Loja from our house. Um, yeah, Zumba just wasn't an option for us. Now, yeah. if you're young and you're in really good health, that's the kind of place to live. I mean, you're going to be able to build a, a really nice place out there in a beautiful part of the Orient. And, um, you know, it's great climate again. Just wonderful. But don't move rural if you're in bad health. 
Well, and back to security again, if you live rural, um, that doesn't mean that people won't try to rob you. I mean, there's a lot of places out there that, again, you, you're moving to an impoverished country and people are trying to survive. And so if you have more than they do, then they think that you can give up some. So uh, don't think that you won't get robbed. So you still have to put in your security and you have to, you really need community around you that is willing to come to your aid if something happens. Absolutely. You know, and on that subject, don't flaunt your cash. No. Don't flaunt your money. Don't flaunt your possessions. You keep that private. So, um, you know, I guess just to sum things up, I mean, don't come here with the wrong expectations. And, yeah. uh, you know, don't don't come here if, if you're straddled by cash. Um, you know, there are some economic refugees here who are able to live here quite well. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, they have a select amount of cash. They've got insurance when they come here. They have other ways to take care of themselves. Well, and don't think that just because prices today may be okay, five years ago they were better. Prices yeah. will go up. I mean, the things that are happening in the world today are forcing prices to go higher. There's, there's no way around it. So if you can't, uh, you know, if you come on a fixed budget and you can't afford any room in your budget for the prices to increase, then this may not be the right place for you. Medicare doesn't work here. So um, you have to get local insurance and they don't pay 100%, especially on pre-existing conditions. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, if you're going to make an exploratory trip to Ecuador, we really recommend that. Um, recommend you come for two weeks, really check it out good, talk yeah. to everybody you can, strangers on the street, you know, um, and, and really try to get everyone's opinion. Don't just rely on our opinion because no. this is just our opinion. True. So it's how we feel about things. But I will say, if you're going to come on an exploratory trip here, if you're not willing to listen to what some of the people have to say and actually hear it. Yeah. Um, so many of the people who come here on an exploratory trip do all the talking. And I don't know how you can listen with the mouth going, but Well, please, you don't learn you know, that much. These people are trying to help you here yeah. to really understand what it's like. And they may say that one thing that you go, oh, wait a minute, I can't live here. I, yeah. can't, I can't get that. I can't do this. I can't do that. So, so really, really, really listen. Yeah, and I think we've, we've had a comment on bugs and stuff like that. It's the Amazon. We have bugs. Don't let anybody tell you that if you're at a higher elevation, you don't have bugs. You still have bugs. Uh, they may be different bugs. I think in town, sometimes they have scorpions. We don't really have scorpions up here, but we have other bugs. So and we have snakes. So and there are snakes. If, you're not, if you can't get over your fear of bugs or snakes... Yeah. yeah. Probably don't move to Ecuador. <laughs> yeah. I mean, keep in mind where you're moving. You're moving to an Amazon. I would say the one thing that I was most disappointed in, in moving to the Amazon is not seeing that much wildlife. Um, you know, well, I expected exotic type animals and the only place we've seen them is in the zoo. <laughs> well, we're not really in the Amazon. We're in the Sierras. We're up in yeah. the mountains. So... But, still. Um, but in the Amazon, there is a lot more wildlife. When you get over to Zumba, yeah. um, there's monkeys and parrots and, you know, cockatoos and whatever else. But yeah. there are over here in the Potocarpus Park, they do have wild bears up there, black bears. Yeah. Um, I saw my first deer here uh, just about a year ago. Yeah. And I've been here five and a half years. And so I saw my first, I think they call it a poodoo. Um, but it's, yeah. a, it's a little deer and it looked like a big dog. So it took a while. Now, we do have on our property some wild rabbits running around. Yeah. We have seen quail probably five or six times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are some, some small wildlife like that. But bigger game is going to be in the Amazon, your, your monkeys, your, you know. But we do have snakes here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. I, I think we saw or I saw more wildlife in Texas than um, here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And... But, you know, our point is, is don't move here if you can't get over the whole snake bug thing. Yeah. Um, I'm, as we're saying, I'm watching bugs fly over our heads right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
So, you know, there are all kinds of little things here. We get ants real bad. Spiders. And, yeah, spiders. We do get some spiders. Mm -hmm. And they leave little whelps on Lisa. They like her. Yeah, yeah, they do. Now, I mean, there's ways of trying to keep that at bay and make that better. Mm -hmm. But um, those things are here. So yeah. I, I see foreigners come here and wearing shorts downtown Vilcabamba. Oh. And they get eaten up by the noceums. Yeah. Uh, little teeny tiny bugs that just, man, leave whelps all over their legs. Their legs just really look bad. And it's, if if you come, you know, there's a reason not very many people wear shorts here. <laughs> because you will get completely eaten up with bugs. Now, it's not impossible to wear shorts here, but if you do, you're going to have to have some sort of bug repellent. And, we, you know, we talk about using olive oil and lemon juice mixed together and rubbing yeah. it on, and that works as a natural. But there's some good natural sprays you can use. Yeah, in the city, in, in Loja, in the bigger cities, I don't think you would have that many problems. But Unless if you're you live gonna, by the river. <laughs> yeah, but if you're going to live rurally, there's a lot of things that chew on you. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. All right, well, I think that sums up our list, huh? That takes care of the 12. So that's the most negative we're going to be. So we'll, we'll keep it more positive moving forward. Definitely. And so, you know, let me just say this. So many of you are so kind with your comments. We appreciate it so much. And if you've, you've left a comment or question, we haven't gotten back to you. We apologize. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just slip through the cracks. We just don't see them. Uh, I was telling Lisa, I was going through there the other day, and I didn't get a notice on about three different comments that I just accidentally found while scrolling through. Yeah. So we try to respond to all of them, but forgive us if we don't. Um, and hang in there. Just keep asking us questions. That's right. Technological issues, you know, happen to everybody. Yeah, and so... Um, you know, if it's something to do with visas, just contact Isabel direct. Mm -hmm. She's going to give you the best information. For some reason, you can't get a hold of her. Contact us and we'll get a hold of her. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're trying to give you the resources to be able to reach out to these people. And there's more of that coming. Mm -hmm. um, I have more resources coming your way. And uh, that'll be in future videos. All right. So that's all we have for today. Ciao for now. Thumbs up.